going on, reef builders? Welcome to another video of exploring the uh, natural reefs. Uh, in the previous video, right before this one, I just did a quick snorkel right here off of Nugu Beach at Sandfly in central province of Solomon Islands. And uh, warmed up now, uh, caught my breath after some intense snorkeling, and I'm uh, gonna suit up with some actual scuba gear. And the plan is, in the previous video, we just explored the shallows uh, right over here. We just explored the shallows uh, that you can already see uh, right from there. But we're gonna go just a little bit further out, right where it drops off, and uh, explore and inspect and scout out uh, some of the deeper, uh, deeper living corals. So I expect to see some, uh, some nice colonies. And uh, yeah, really was impressed with what I saw in the shallow water. So I have no doubt that uh, in a little bit deeper water, we're gonna see some equally amazing coral. So thanks for coming back and uh, I'm gonna suit up. And we're gonna jump in. Here's a better look at the three giant clams guarding the entrance to the reef. The white spot next to the incurrent siphon is actually a, uh, a bleached area that will result from a small pile of sand that I blew off the day before. If you'll notice the thick, broken staghorn coral branches, you really get a reference for the size of these clams, not to mention how much they dwarf the damselfish swimming above it. Just a short swim away from the shore, this is the reef slope. This is where things really begin to become interesting and we see a shift from corals that dominate the shallows to corals that are more abundant in deeper water. So together here, this is one of those places where um, there's a huge diversity of shapes, sizes, corals, and uh, coral species that occur in a wide range of habitats. So while diving, it's uh, best practice to go to the deepest part of your dive plan and then come up more shallow. So here I am uh, partially down the reef wall, probably around 50 to 60 feet, and you can see that the slope gets a little bit steeper. At around 65 feet, I encountered this kind of loose grouping of large parlip, sarcophyte, and toadstool leather coral. So I hope that this can actually serve as a little bit of inspiration for aquascaping reef tanks using this type of coral. Right where most reef slopes bottom out, you usually hit a sandy zone, and this is where you'll find some of the deep water bommies. On these deep water bommies, you have uh, a diversity of corals, including chalices, more leather corals, um, cyanarenas, blastmooses, and this is definitely where things start to get really interesting. One thing I want the reef aquarium folks to notice is that there is a wide diversity of corals on their spami, but they have a lot of room in between them. So there's a lot less chance for these corals stinging each other, and each one can kind of find the nook and cranny where it, uh, it grows and survives the best. 
It's not every time, but on a regular basis, I will actually see torch corals growing right at the sand zone next to Obami. But it's a lot more rare to encounter a nice cloud of these anemone shrimp or coral shrimp. And uh, simply sticking my hand out, invited one of them to come and uh, give me a little grooming, see if I can find a little tasty treat. Blastamusa is legitimately a rare coral in the wild. I'm lucky to see one or two colonies on a dive like this, which is deep, but I think this is the first time I've ever seen a really nice, beautiful orange specimen of Blastamusa. This thing has so much rainbow potential with that purple mouth. Uh, this is just an amazing specimen. We're in the perfect place to encounter a coral that the Solomon Islands is well known for. It's the translucent Cyanarina lacrimalis. Here's a solitary example of the torch coral, Euphelia glabrescens. Uh, right now you can see that it's not really experiencing that much flow. Just a few feet away, we see a couple coralites of another species that it really enjoys this calm environment, Astralamusa. One thing that I'm starting to notice about the common bubble coral, Plerogyra sinuosa, is that even if you see it in a wide range of environments, it almost always is attached uh, horizontally to the substrate. This makes it really common on shipwrecks and reef walls, but even on a typical reef like this, it is uh, growing at a 90 degree angle. Here you can see the typical placement for a pair of uh, Cyanarina coralites. And like the bubble coral, they are rarely pointed upwards facing the surface and more likely to be encountered at the bottom of a bami and um, also growing semi-horizontally or at least an angle. One thing that you see on the reef that you won't see really in the aquarium hobby is uh, overgrown specimens of uh, fungia disc coral. This guy right here was probably about 12 inches or 30 centimeters across. Uh, another flat growing coral is this oxypora. Not as colorful as the chalice corals we're used to, but still pretty striking when you're diving. And here's an encrusting disc coral. This is known as Cantharellus. And I think this is kind of the missing link between the uh, encrusting lithophyllons that we have in the aquarium hobby. And um, this red mouth mycetium is actually a really common strain of um, mycetium robokaki. And in white light, it's, it's kind of neat, you know, but under blue light, this thing will grab your attention from across the room or across the reef. This lobophilia looks pretty basic under white light, but we know what it can do under blue light. And here you can see just how huge the true elephant ear mushroom anemones can get.
Here I come across a nice neighborhood of Euphelia corals, including a sizable colony of white tip torch coral. And right next to that was a uh, octopus or frog spawn coral. Not too much color, but a very nice large colony. As I start to come up a little bit more shallower, I come across a really nice colony of a brownish gray, thin branching Hydnophora or horn coral. I haven't seen too many horn corals in the hobby lately, but I'm uh, definitely on the lookout for some more, especially after seeing how beautiful a uh, silvery gray specimen can be. A large colony of uh, Diploastria greets us as we begin to arrive into the middle depth. And here's another coral you don't see in the aquarium hobby too much. It's a branching Echinopora and some beautiful damselfish uh, hanging out in a Pavona colony right behind it. Believe it or not, this is also a branching species. This is Echinopora mammiformis. It can be kind of purplish or kind of greenish. And you can see it's starting to develop a, a little bit of stump uh, as far as a future branch. Here at about 30 feet, where the light is a little bit more intense, we can finally come across some nice acropora colonies. This is a really healthy stand of a bottle brush acropora species right next to a thick staghorn acropora. And this is a perfect habitat to encounter a bunch of small gobies and smart blue damselfish. Thankfully, I was able to rediscover the really awesome colony of blue branching Anacropora. What you're looking at is definitely a uh, jumble of branches because this reef was actually hit by a cyclone maybe four or five months before this video was taken. Um, so the branches are going in every direction, but this is actually part of the way that species like this, the thin branching species, that's how they spread. Um, I was able to find a different patch of this blue Anacropora that was not broken up all over the place, but at least this species is healthy and uh, we'll be able to repopulate no problem. But this is where coral farming could really take a lot of these loose coral frags and turn them into amazing broodstock for future uh, coral farming efforts. Here's a perfect example of why I love diving the natural coral reef. This Parides is not exactly a looker, but it's only on the wild reef that you can really see species of closely related corals side by side and appreciate the, uh, the nuances of what makes them special. No matter the species or the color, these flat growing table acros always get my attention. There's not a single one of these that I don't stop and inspect for a little bit. It's just really cool to see the difference from the interior of the colony to the margins and even uh, new plates starting up uh, from the inside. We're back to the shallow part of the coral reef. And if you made it through this entire video, through a lot of brown coral, you will now be rewarded with some true reef aquarium coral eye candy, because this is where we start to see our beloved Acropora millipora. You've probably heard that uh, colorful corals on the reef are actually rare. This is true of virtually most corals except for Acropora millipora. 
I would have to say that at least in the Solomon Islands, the pink form of Millie's is the most common form. But there's not just pink. As you can see, this particular colony has yellow tips and there's every variety in between. I'm not sure if this pink coral is a massive Prides or Montipora, but the combination of bluish and pinkish tones is really, really cool. But what we're actually here for is the nice yellow green Acropora millipore next to it. Now, if you look real close, you will see some hints of pink on those raspy corallites. And this is the kind of coral strain that uh, can really blossom in an aquarium environment. Here's another beautiful pink Acropora millipora, a little bit more well-defined yellow tips, but definitely take note of the polyp extension of these corals. They're definitely out for a reason, and that's to feed. So if you have Acromillies, make sure to feed them a lot. And like our previous video, we're gonna wrap it up with a pair of clownfish and anemone. There's a pair of Clark guy rising up in the water to defend their anemone. I believe this is a crisp anemone. Without seeing the base, it's hard to know. Well, what a morning, you guys. It's, uh, it's hardly even 11 o'clock. And I've already spent uh, half of the day underwater. First with a long snorkel and then a nice dive. Saw some really nice corals. It's just an easy, easy diving reef. The water's warm, the water's clear. Um, it's still, there's not really many waves or tidal uh, influences. Um, on the way back in, the shallows were starting to get a little bit cloudy because the tide's going out. But uh, yeah, otherwise I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, up and close look at uh, the corals here on the reef of uh, uh, Nugu Beach. It's Nugu Beach, right? Okay. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get some food, warm up a little bit, and then we're gonna plan a next dive. Yeah. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't ever miss an episode. And I'll catch you guys on the next one very, very shortly.